Hello, everyone, and welcome to Transfer Spotlights, our video series highlighting the people, programs, departments, and everything else that makes UMass great, uh, with a specific focus on need to know information for transfer students. Uh, today, we will be focusing on financial aid. And to that end, I am joined today by Kale Miata from Financial Aid. Kale, thank you for joining me today. Pleasure to be here. Uh, before we get into some of the questions that I have, that we're going to kind of cover today. I was hoping that you could kind of give an introduction to who you are <laughs> and uh, what you do at Financial Aid. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Kale Miera and I am the Assistant Director of Financial Aid Services, uh, specifically in the Outreach Division. Cool. And, and, and what does that uh, mean for someone who doesn't uh, <laughs> work at UMass? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I communicate with the students. I might do presentations, uh, and this can be with transfer students, incoming students. Uh, they can really be a range, but my job duty is to really provide the information uh, in an educational format and to support students and staff. Awesome. Um, so I think because of that, you have a lot of experience with answering transfer questions when it comes to uh, financial aid. Um, I think the big thing, it's more general, but to kind of start off, um, is there anything or what should transfer students be aware of as a part of the transfer process? What are common questions that you get? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's, there's a lot, obviously, <laughs> but I think there's, you know, like, like the top ones that I'd like to focus on. So the first and, you know, the most important thing probably is that you complete your FAFSA. Um, so even if you haven't been accepted yet and things haven't gone through it's important that you complete the FAFSA because every university is going to require the FAFSA and a FAFSA is basically the free application uh, that students are required to submit if they're interested in receiving any type of uh, federal aid uh, and also state or anything like that. Um, I, I guess uh, going off of that uh, kind of a question that I get a lot um, is students who assume that they're not going to be getting any financial aid um, and for a student in that kind of a situation, um, should they still submit the FAFSA even if they think they're not going to get anything? Is there any negative to it? Um, I always recommend that people complete the FAFSA just because there could be certain uh, like awards that you could qualify for. And part of the requirement is that you complete the FAFSA. So we can talk about the John Abigail Adams, for example. Mm -hmm. so it's about $1,714 per year right now. Um, and part of the requirement for the John Abigail Adams is that um, you need to complete the FAFSA in order for those funds to be dispersed. So, uh, you know, let's say your annual income is a million dollars, right? And you're like, you know, I'm not going to receive any grants and things like that. So that's true. But if you like the John Abigail Adams, it's important that you still complete the FAFSA. Uh, so are there any other big questions that you get? Anything else that you think um, we'd like to head off at the pass, as it were? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the other thing that's important is that you include your social security information on the application. Some people tend to forget to do that. Um, and also making sure that your name is on there and there's no errors, because what happens is if there's two databases where the information doesn't match up, it can create some errors that we might have to work through later. Uh, so if you get it right the first time, it would kind of save you some time. Uh, that does sound, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, yeah. And there's, <laughs> you know, sorry. So I can keep going on the other items here too. So um, if you are, you know, getting the mass transfer tuition credit, uh, remember that you need to maintain your 3.0 GPA uh, and that you need to be enrolled consecutively. Um, so it's important to know that, um, you know, if you're getting an award, you, you have to be aware of what the rules are uh, associated with that reward or award, sorry. Awesome. Uh, so kind of moving on from that, um, in addition to applying for financial aid through the FAFSA, which is obviously the, the big one, um, are there any other services that financial aid can offer to transfer students? Like what are reasons that they would want to connect with a financial aid counselor? Yeah, absolutely. So we offer financial aid counseling. Uh, so that means that if you have a question, uh, you're confused about something, or you know you're you're frustrated with uh, the financial circumstance or the FAFSA, what, you know whatever the case might be, you can come into our office. Or you know right now with COVID, it's more of a virtual setup, but you can set up a Zoom meeting with us. 
and we're able to have more of a face-to-face -face or virtual interaction and we'd be happy to assist uh, an individual in that sense. And also we can complete students uh, and families uh, basically get the FAFSA done with. So the FAFSA can be a little bit tricky with some parts and the questions can be a little bit confusing. So we're happy to assist you with that process if you have any questions. Um, and also if you get selected for verification or anything like that, then we're able to help with that as well. We also do financial wellness counseling um, as well as uh, student employment. Um, kind of the last big question that I had um, that I think is good to cover in this is uh, what are some essential deadlines, whether it's the FAFSA or anything else that transfer students specifically should be aware of and, and kind of both for if they're coming in for spring and if they're coming in for fall? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first thing is exactly what you said, the FAFSA. So the FAFSA opens up on October 1st. So it's important that you know when it's available. So then you can get it started early. Um, I recommend that maybe you complete it uh, maybe during the winter time. So, you know, maybe December through January where you might have a little bit more time on your hands and just get it done at that point. Uh, and then to also be aware of the deadlines that exist. So for the FAFSA for UMass Amherst, the priority deadline um, is uh, March 1st. Sorry, I had to think about that one. Um, but you have to make sure that you, you know, complete everything by that point if you want to be uh, considered for uh, basically getting the information earlier for financial aid packages and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then also for the FAFSA, the Massachusetts deadline is May 1st. Um, and then the most important thing, I think, is that even if you forget to do the FAFSA or you pass a deadline and, you know, you're looking into... August and it's super late. I still, you know, I always still recommend that you still complete the FAFSA because uh, there's still a chance that you can get grants and uh, scholarships and things like that. A percentage is better than nothing in, in that regard. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Right. Like if you spend 30 minutes, you know, to get the FAFSA done with, and then if that gets you, you know, a hundred dollars, then that's great. That's a pretty good return on your investment in terms of uh, time. So. What if uh, I get this question a lot from transfer students? Um, if a student, like in August, is like, you know what, actually, I'm I want to transfer for spring. Um, at one point, how is it going to affect their process if they're looking to transfer schools um, in the middle of the year, um, in terms of adding us to the FAFSA or still getting financial aid? Because um, I think there's a lot of confusion on on how that works. Yeah, so they definitely need to go into the FAFSA and you can actually send the FAFSA to UMass Amherst directly. Uh, when you're doing the FAFSA, there's a section where you can include uh, like the school code or you can just type in the university and you're able to select the university so you can send it to that university. Uh, without the FAFSA and financial information, we're not able to move forward. Uh, so by basically selecting the university, like if you're selecting UMass Amherst, uh, then we're able to move forward from there. Uh, and then once you go through, then you're able to get packaged and things like that. Okay. Um, but if they're, if we're already in the financial year, so already in the middle of the fall semester, um, and they're doing it then, is that going to have a huge impact on financial aid um, at UMass? Yeah. So you're saying this person, you know, hypothetically is completed the fast, completing the FAFSA, you know, mid fall semester, looking to maybe start in the spring. Is that right? Well, so uh, probably they already filled it out for their current university yes. um, that they're attending in the fall, but didn't add us to the FAFSA and are doing that um, now that they know they want to transfer and they're applying around October 1st. Yeah, so they can uh, basically go back into the FAFSA and then uh, add the school that they want to send it to. So then we can receive the information. The timeline can be a little bit tricky uh, because it takes maybe a week or two after we receive or after you uh, complete the FAFSA at the federal level, they send it to UMass Amherst and that time period can be about a week or two. Um, so, you know, it might be tricky if uh, this information gets sent over to us in, you know, December or November. 
Uh, so I would definitely recommend, if that's the case, you try to do it earlier uh, because that's probably going to be better. Um, but as long as you add UMass Amherst on there and we're able to receive that information, then we're able to kind of take a look at the FAFSA uh, and go from there. Cool. Um, I think the last thing that, that I kind of can think of in terms of a, a question, um, sort of a timeline. So if a student's admitted, uh, they've submitted their FAFSA, um, they don't need it to submit anything else for verification. How quickly after they get an admissions offer um, can they expect a financial aid response? Yeah, so um, the timeline can vary, uh, you know, de depending on what's happening when and also, you know, is there COVID, is there no COVID? So <laughs> the timeline can move around. But um, assuming that you're, you know, let's say you're starting for the fall semester, um, and if you submitted the FAFSA and everything on time, uh, you can definitely expect to see uh, like what you might be having for a financial aid package uh, by at least June or so. But I, I do want to kind of caution that this timeline can move mm -hmm. uh, depending on what other variables exist. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, thanks so much for your, for your answers to these questions. I, I think it's going to help a lot to kind of uh, answer those questions that they, the students might have up front. Anything else you wanted to add before we before we head out? <laughs> yeah, um, I think the other important thing that I might have forgot to mention is to keep checking your Spire to-do list. Uh, you know, once you have your Spire portal through UMass, because if there's any items that you have to complete, uh, like citizenship verification, whatever the case might be, it's going to pop up on there. So you want to keep an eye on your to-do list uh, because if you're not really checking and you're not really aware of what documents are required that could keep delaying when you get the financial aid package so it's important that you log into your spire look on the right hand side where there's a little box and keep checking the to-do list to make sure that you have all your items in awesome well thank you gail it was really helpful and uh, uh everyone else uh, we're going to have more videos coming up on a bunch of different departments but uh thanks for for watching this video and uh, uh thanks again gail